r slash ask reddit posted by you slash lo fi underscore kuzco managers of reddit what made you fire an employee on their first day customer service desk at an insurance company basically just rerouting incoming calls to the relevant claims handler 18 ish yo lad comes from a temp agency seemed a bit dippy but should have been able to manage this easy job after a couple of hours he'd secured his headset to his head by wrapping cello tape around his head and face several times. Weird but, okay. Checked on him again 15 minutes later and he'd also sellotaped his telephone handset, each workstation had both, to his head in the same manner. Not only that but he'd sellotaped his whole head to his monitor and was just sitting there going I don't quite know what to do about this while the call queue stacked up. I know no one can be quite that inept and it's most likely he was either trying to be funny or he just decided he didn't like the job and wanted out, but I prefer to think he was absolutely fucking mental, and imagine that he's now a stuntman or a rodeo clown or something. I was assistant manager at Subway. I usually liked to give people time. It's a tougher job than it seems from the outside, everyone sucks at first, and taking someone's livelihood away is not a decision to be made lightly. But I had one lady who only lasted three hours. She was perfectly fine for the first couple minutes, while the store manager was there. But she had a doctor's appointment, so she introduced us and told the new employee I was in charge when she wasn't there. As soon as my boss left, this lady just flatly ignored me when I asked her to do stuff like food prep or dishes. So I was already pretty pissed but trying to be patient. When we got busy, I stationed her putting veggies on sandwiches. She said a few things to customers that annoyed me, but nothing too bad at first. Then one guy asked for extra olives and she told him no. He was a bit offended and asked again, and she practically shouts, you don't need any more olives, you have plenty. So I tell her to give him the olives he's asking for. Then she starts shouting at me about Subway standard veggie portions like I wasn't the one who taught her 45 minutes ago. I tried a little to explain that it's a default amount but customers can get extra, no big deal. She wasn't having it, so I stepped away from my station, gave the poor guy his olives, and apologized. That's when she lost it and started screaming that I was undermining her. Dot I told her to go do dishes and I'd cover her station. She went storming off. Thank God. I was already planning on talking to the store manager about it, because holy shit. But as luck would have it, the franchise owner dropped in for something or other. As soon as new girl realized who he was, she started ranting about how I didn't control my veggie portions or some shit and I should be fired. When the franchise owner took my side, obviously, she shouted at him too. That was that, except that she called the store manager later, in tears begging to know what she'd done wrong, and made it sound like she didn't realize I was her boss or that shouting at the owner about how he doesn't know how to run a business is inappropriate. So technically not their first day but this was the last day of their temp trial period and then the next day they were going to be made full time. He was a forklift driver and we keep materials stacked high on very tall racks. Operators are told never ever to drive with the forklift raised up. You remain stationary, lift up, get the pallet, bring it all the way down, then drive. Driver decides to drive the forklift while raised, clips the water sprinkler, tears the piping from the ceiling, causes the water system to go off and half our warehouse flooded. We make labels in our shop and paper and water don't go well together. He ended up destroying over $40,000 worth of finished product. That's product we already spent money and time making. Girl snorted in disgust when I asked her to clear a table in her section. Wouldn't be shown how to set a table, and snapped at another manager. Do you even want to be here? I asked. Not really. Okay, grab your stuff, good luck to you. My cousin is spoiled as fuck. I previously commented on how he sued a bouncer for assaulting him driving the nightclub and the bouncer to huge debts as a result of litigation. Anyway, my cousin's dad owns many companies. One day, the office manager of one of those companies fired him because he always shows up after 2 p.m. at work. My cousin said he'll regret it. Unfortunately, the dad called the manager, 
told him to put him on the loudspeaker and said no favors in front of everyone. Still fired. He eventually weaved his way back in after facing some huge dressing down from his dad. Pub and bar manager here. This happened at my previous pub. New guy's first shift and he was constantly on his phone and going for cigarette breaks without permission. Two hours into his shift his mates came in and he gave them all free drinks, shots and snacks, a few of them were under 18. Fired him on the spot and he had the audacity to appeal, despite overwhelming evidence against him including five witness statements and CCTV, not to mention the stock count deficit. Edit, just to clarify I'm from the UK, England. Hired a guy on the recommendation of another employee. He no call no showed the first day. Second day he no call no showed, but halfway through the day called to tell me that his kid was sick, which I'm sympathetic for because I have kids too, but I had to tell him we couldn't choose him. Then waves of abusive texts and phone messages from him and his wife. His final text was super long and explained how I just made it an enemy for life and that he was going to get even by starting up a rival business and putting me out of business. If only he'd put that much energy into showing up. It is what happened on the first day but he didn't get fired until a bit later when we figured it out. Managed a MSP team hired a bright guy. All seems good on the first day. At the end of the first day he received a phone call where he announced his father has passed away. Two weeks of compassionate leave for funeral out of state later, he was supposed to start work again but called from the car park to say he's too distraught. This goes on for three more weeks until one day we got a phone call from someone looking for this worker. It was his father. As it turned out he's been running this scam where he gets jobs with multiple companies and pulls this same stunt getting paid during the probationary period regardless of what happened for as long as he can. He set up salary payment to multiple accounts himself and to friends to avoid detection from tax agency. This guy was smooth. Lied and cried conned the lot of us. Not sure what happened to him but we reported this to the tax agency for a case of tax fraud. So I was managing a low-end casual chain restaurant and had hired this kid, probably 17 to 18, the prior week. Let's call him Tony. I had done orientation with him his first day and then I had a week off for vacation. On my first day back to work, Tony is an hour late. We are super busy so I just tell him to get to work cooking and I will address it later. He looks very lost and confused even though he had 5 training days with my lead trainer. He pulls me aside and says he will be right back and needs to go to the restroom. I'm a bit frustrated with him already and confused why he's asking but I say it's fine obviously. Then it happens. My lead trainer comes to me and tells me that this kid is not Tony. I reply with what do you mean? She says I was training Tony for five days, that is not him. I honestly thought he was another new hire now, I had only met the kid once for an hour right before vacation so I honestly didn't remember what he looked like. I bolt to the bathroom to confront him once he comes out to find the bathroom empty with a folded up shirt and hat on the booth outside. The next day I call Tony to ask what the hell. He ignores the first call and then blocks my next call. So I try from my cell phone and he answers, I say my name and he immediately hangs up and blocks me too. So my staff and I were left to assume that Tony apparently sent his friend in to work his job, in full uniform, and nobody but my lead trainer caught it. I'd if I should be embarrassed, or impressed that his friend has some major balls to go undercover like that. I was an internal consultant for a regional healthcare provider. I was integrating a smaller and newly acquired healthcare provider that was mostly residential homes for elderly individuals with moderate mental health issues. Technically I was also the interim director of this new division during the transition period, once they were fully integrated I would step away and return to my consultant role, and during the transition period I was everyone's boss. I was at one of the site's reading charts and coordinating with the site's program manager about transitioning patient records to our system when I physically witnessed the program manager berate a patient for requesting something completely reasonable, it was something about requesting transport but the exact details escaped me. Berating them would have been verboten regardless but the request was simple, reasonable, and easily granted. 
In our system this would have been a simple yes without any fuss. But even if it were a no it should have been delivered in a respectful way with an appropriate explanation. And then she immediately got on the phone and complained about the patient to a co-worker while making fun of them. In. Front. Of. Me. I was sitting across the table from her. I looked at my assistant because I thought I was going crazy and her eyebrows were so high up on her forehead they merged with her hair. I fired her on the spot. To clarify, it wasn't the program manager's first day on the job, it was her first day as an employee of my organization. Not a manager, but was training a new guy on a plastic bag cutting machine. The kind of bags used for products like fiberglass, peat moss, or salt. These machines sometimes have plastic buildup around the sealers and when this happens the machine needs to be stopped and cleaned. Usually this only takes a minute. Power off, engage kill switch, remove excess plastic, changed Eflon strip if necessary, disengage kill switch, then power back on. This was explained multiple times. Twice on the first night, he disengaged the kill switch and started the machine while I was working on it could have had my fingers crushed, or had it clamp on the tools I was using and send shattered pieces everywhere. Lucky for me the machine starts to vibrate a second before it actually starts and I was able to pull away quickly enough both times. I stopped the machine, grabbed my manager and my union rep, explained what happened and he was gone in 5 minutes. Fuck him. I had an employee call off on her first scheduled day. On her second scheduled day. She showed up two hours late. This was a sub shop. We weren't open yet but we had been in doing prep, baking bread, and building our sub trays for catering orders. We told her that this wasn't going to work out and she got pissed. She started yelling that we were all racists assholes and as she stormed out the door, she knocked over stacks of sub trays. We lost 15 trays to her tantrum. My boss went running out the door after her and the girl's boyfriend got out of the car and reached behind his back swearing and telling my, female, boss that if she keeps stepping to them that he would stop her good. We are pretty sure that he had a gun. My boss checked the license plate and came back in. We had all of this girl's information, address, phone, social security, etc., from the paperwork so with that and the security footage of her destroying the trays. We were able to press charges for the damage. Chief officer of a merchant vessel here. Technically, second in command of the ship after the captain. A seaman joined our ship while our vessel was berthed in Mobile, Alabama. He was carrying a plastic water bottle during familiarization rounds on deck with the third officer, and when it was empty proceeded to throw the bottle overboard. My Russian captain saw this, calmly asked me to call the seaman to his office, gave back all his documents asked the agent to book him a flight back to where he came from. All of this happened in a span of three hours. Well, second day for this one. Old guy, kept dozing off during training. Denied it when I addressed him about it and yet it kept happening. Fired him for it on day two. Fast forward maybe eight months, he emails me to let me know that he really had been falling asleep and I had been justified with the action I took. He realized there was an issue a few weeks after I terminated him because he fell asleep while driving and rear-ended another vehicle. Went to a specialist as a result and they found that the Parkinson's medication he'd started shortly before beginning training was making him narcoleptic. Said he had rectified that with new meds and asked for a second chance. Gave him the opportunity for a do-over. And lo and behold, he's a good employee. EDA LOL at the assumptions being made below about lawsuits or overreacting, or being afraid of looking bad, when it's clearly an abridged version of an event to simplify it for the purposes of this thread. I stand by my original decision, just as I stand by deciding to bring him back after he offered me context and a mea culpa. Also, to the kind comments about me as a manager, I learned what kind of manager I wanted to be by occasionally having a poor one myself. My staff are given forthrightness, clarity of expectation, and as much transparency as I can offer them. In return I want honesty, a reasonable level of performance slash productivity and good effort at doing their work well.